adventures in time and space, transcribed in future tense. The master. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of astounding science fiction, brings you Dimension X. On a high hill in Samoa, there is a grave inscribed on the marker of these words. Under the wide and starry sky, did my lie. Gladly did I live and gladly die, and I lay me down with a will. This be the verse you graved for me. Here he lies where he longed to be. Home is the sailor, home from the sea, and the hunter, home from the hill. These lines appear another place. Scrawled on a shipping tag from a compressed air container and pinned to the ground with a knife. It wasn't much of a fair as fairs go. The trotting races wouldn't be held till 8 o'clock at night. And the flags and bunting drooped in the gray afternoon and the pitchmen seemed discouraged. A large black cabriolet limousine stood at the side of the road, 32 cylinders purring quietly. And over the dust and the clatter of the fair, a bullhorn blasted its highest pitch. Hurry, 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 this way to the moon rocket, the moon rocket. See it fly, the actual type rocket used by the first man to fly it. Chills, thrills, the romance of space. You can ride in it for only $25. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Henry. Yes, sir. I'm getting out. But the board meeting, sir, you're due in Kansas City at four. You think I need another $5 gold piece? Oh, no, sir. Are you trying to tell me what to do? No, sir. Of course not, sir. Then get this confounded buffalo robe off my legs. Yes, sir. Get it off. Just a minute, sir. I'll help you. Let go of me. Of course, sir. Let me watch your head on the door, sir. Let go of me. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, that's the ship. Rotten old cub. Single jet type with fractional midriff controls. Stay here, Henry. I'm going over. The moon rocket. Fifty seconds to come aboard. Flight leaving in 30 minutes. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hey, Charlie, you got that feed tube patched? I welded it. Good for maybe an hour. Oh, what a crowd. They wouldn't risk a nickel to see the sun blow up. Oh, Captain. Oh, excuse me, Captain. Yeah? Uh, oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, 50 cents to inspect the rock. One? Would you take a passenger this trip? You mean you want to go up? It's 25 bucks. That's right. Yes, sir, right away. Charlie, uh, take the pitch. Oh, okay. Step this way, sir. Um, look out! Uh, look out for the speed lines there. Yes, I see them. Step, uh, step right into the office. The doc, passenger for checkup. Okay, Jack. Is this necessary? Regulation. Uh, take off your coat, open your shirt, roll up your hat, see. How things, man? Slow. We're not drawing as much as the coat stamp. Yeah, we'll pick up tonight with the trotters. Well, I'm ready, Doctor. All right. Your arm. All right. Breathe in. Out. Breathe. 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 Uh, uh, sorry, Mac. No go, Doc. Cardiac condition. I couldn't certify him. Sorry. You mean you won't take me up? He's the doctor. I couldn't even guarantee you'd live through the takeoff. It's not only your bad heart, but with heavy acceleration, your whole circulatory system would be in danger. And at your age, bones are brittle, highly calcified. You can snap one on the takeoff. Stop. Well, I rather expected it. I'm sorry. 
Between you and me, we could have used the 25. Uh, excuse me, Captain. Yeah? Could you and your engineer have dinner with me after your flight? Dinner? At my home. Uh, my car is over there. That's your car? Yes. You're serious, Mac? You want Charlie and me for dinner? Oh, uh, yes. Okay, okay. I don't see why not. Thanks. Charlie. Charlie, you had enough. Oh, lay off, man. Oh, that's perfectly all right, Captain McIntyre. A cigar? Oh, thanks. Mmm, light. Yes, thanks. You know, it's hard for me to see why any holder of a master's ticket would quit the Earth's moon run. I didn't like it. Yeah, yeah. Don't have those that. It was Rule G walked you out. All right, all right. So I took a few drinks. I, I could have squared that. Too many regulations. Red tape. Yeah. Would it uh, help you to get back to the moon? Sure. I could get a short haul job hopping on. If I kept my nose clean, I might even get back on the run. Yes, and uh, would you be open to a business proposition? What is it? You own your rocket? Barring a couple of leans. I want to charter her to take me to the moon. What? You hear what he said, Mac? He wants us to fly that old heap to the moon. <laughs> oh, no, I can't do it. The old boat's worn out. We don't even use standard fuel. Just gasoline and liquid air. Why don't you bribe a couple of company medics that's been done before? I know, but not for me. I'm D.D. D. Harriman. Harriman? Why, you own the company. I own a large percentage of the company, but the other directors won't permit me to jeopardize the franchise. <laughs> Can you tie that, Mac? A guy with half the money in the world, and he's up the creek. Shut up, Charlie. <laughs> he's right. Well, Captain, it's against the law. I'd make it worth your while. Sure he would, Mac. D.D. Harriman. He'd make it worth our while. Mac, Luna City. Why do you want to go to the moon so bad, Mr. Harriman? It's the one thing I've really wanted to do all my life. I may be 50 years older than you are. When I was a kid, nobody believed we'd really reach the moon. You've seen rockets all your lives, but... When I was a boy, they laughed at the idea. But I believed. I wanted the moon man. I used to stand in the backyard and stare. How far away is it, Mom? The moon? Far enough. Why don't people fly to the moon? Oh, they can't. Why not? They just can. Not now, anyway. Someday I will. What? Fly to the moon. Sure, sure. Come on now, Dell. Inside. Way past your bedtime. I wanted to go to college. Engineering. Then the University of Chicago. Then Yerkes Observatory. That's what I wanted. But I didn't get it. You see, Dell, Dad and I wanted you to go to college. We planned it. We saved for it. But with your dad gone and the girls growing up, I just can't manage it. The insurance won't cover us, and it's getting harder to make ends meet. You've been a good boy, Dell, and worked hard to make out. You'll understand. I understood, and I worked. Stock boy at the old Ford plant in Detroit. Accountant. Credit manager for a mail order house, and then New York, Wall Street, and then transportation, the monorail line between New York and Chicago, the Atlantic Pressure Tunnel, and then Harriman Rockets. Dell, Dell, I want to talk to you. But I'm working, Charlotte. You talk to me now, Dell, or you may not get another chance. What is it? Fred Lockwood, you. You've sold out again? 
I run the business, Charlotte. Well, I'm fed up. It's up to here. I married you because I love you. I still love you, but I'm fed up. Now, what is it, Charlotte? We're not young anymore, Dale. I'm tired. I'm not asking for millions, just a little life for the two of us. I'll pull the money out. Huh? I know you will. Twenty hours a day on Benzedrine to stay awake and Neil Barbatol to sleep. Dell, I can't stop you from doing this to yourself, but I won't let you do it to me. I didn't know about the divorce for a month. I lost the papers under a stack of blueprints and stock prospectus. Here's the news flash, Dell. Strato Rocket reaches Paris. We've got the franchise lined up. The House Committee is solid. The Federal Rocket Commission is okay. The next step is the moon, Fred. Sure, sure. Look, Dell, if we cut the freight rate on the tunnel, we could... I'm get... serious, Fred. The next step is the moon. Dell, you've been riding that joke for years. It's no joke, Fred. I've signed a $4 million research contract with National Fission Corporation and guaranteed the next two years' output of the Brookhaven Atomic Energy Institute. Dell, you couldn't. That's every liquid asset we have. You can't do that on your own initiative. I have, and the board will back me up. Fred, we're going to the moon. It took two fraudulent bankruptcies and an investigation by the Securities and Exchange Commission before we did it. There were three injunctions on the rocket before it blasted off. I was going on the second trip, but my considerate board served a court order on me. You can't go, Dell. Fred, I'll break you if it's the last well, thing you've I... got a bad heart. That's no secret. If you die out there, the whole card house comes down. We've got an equity in this corporation, and we're going to see it protected. You've sucked us in on this wild scheme, and now that it paid off, you're going to sit right down here on Earth and see that the dividends come out on time. You're not going to the moon, Dell. Forget it. I never went. By the time my lawyers shook off the restraining orders, the first cargo rocket had crashed into the Pacific, and Congress rushed through the Space Precautionary Act. My heart was earthbound, but now I'm old. But I will not die until I have set foot on the moon. There, Captain McIntyre. You ask why I want to go to the moon? Well? You'll find a ship, Mr. Harriman. I'll drive her. You'll get to the moon. What, Mr. Harriman? You heard me sell out my holdings. I want every share I own realized in cash as soon as possible. But it'll depress the market, sir. You won't realize the full value of your holdings. Don't you think I know that? I was juggling stock before you were born. I can afford to take the loss. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Mr. Harriman, there are two men outside. Who are they? Uh, Captain McIntyre and a Mr. Schwartz. Well, send them in, Henry. What are you waiting for? Yes, of course, immediately, sir. Uh, this way, gentlemen. Mr. Harriman. Well, Captain McIntyre, I'm glad to see you. And Mr. Schwartz, come right in. Thanks. You weren't uh, kidding about that job for us, were you? Certainly not. You're not backing out on me, are you? No, no, we uh, we need the job. Yeah, our ship is lying in the middle of the Osage River with her jets split open like a herring. You weren't hurt, were you? Sprains and bruises, that's all. We jumped. I caught a catfish with my bare teeth. That's all right. Then we can get down to business. I'll have contracts drawn up for you. You two will have to buy me a ship. I can't do it openly. My dear board of directors will find out and slap a court order on me. But uh, we can't get credit. Don't worry. I'll supply the cash in advance. Pick some ship that can be fitted for the jump. A straddle yacht. Uh, move to a piece of desert. I'll find a strip and buy it. You mean fitter out there? Yes, we'll install extra fuel tanks, change the injectors and timers for space flight. Spend all the money you want. I'll see that you get it. Why?
132 shares of Apex holding at 60% of par. Check. 52 preferred of Spaceways Fuel, 50% of par. Check. And uh, that is the list. Uh, Mr. Harriman, there's a process server outside. What is it? I don't know, sir, but I think it's a subpoena. I was expecting that. Henry, get Mr. Cammons on the phone. Yes, sir. I think it's time for my lawyer. Representing Mr. Harriman's relatives, contend that his behavior for the past few weeks gives clear indication that a mind brilliant in the world of finance has become seen on. They petition you to declare him incompetent and to assign a conservator to protect his financial interests and those of his heirs. May I suggest that in his last few words, my opponent gave away his entire thesis. It is evident that the petitioners believe that my client should conduct his affairs in such a way as to ensure that his nephews, nieces, and their issue will be supported in unearned luxury the rest of their lives. Like vultures, they depend on it. Now, while it is true that he has sold his holdings, is it strange that an elderly man should wish to retire? We pray this court will confirm my client in his right to do what he likes with his own. Deny this petition and send these meddlers about their business. <laughs> He reserved judgment till tomorrow. Which way is the cat going to jump? Well, Judge Embry is a strange one, Dal. He assured me he has a higher regard for personal liberty and then added that any action he took would be in your interest. But he did say that men do become senile and must be protected. Senile? He might rule against me. Yes, Dal. He might. Here it is. Eccentric millionaire disappeared. <laughs> Are you eccentric, Mr. Harriman? Well, they used to call me crazy. <laughs> it depends on your credit rating. A bench warrant under contempt proceedings has been issued. They won't find me out here. How's the work going, Charlie? Oh, well, my end's in pretty good shape. We finished the second pressure test on the new tanks and fuel lines today. The ground tests are all done except the calibrations. Take about four hours unless I run into bugs. How about supplies? Food and water on board. Three vacuum suits, a spare, and service kit. I'm short navigation equipment, but... Give me a sextant, and I'll get you down on the moon at any spot you name. Just from a general knowledge of relative speeds and orbit. All right, Columbus. We know you can hit the floor with your hat. Are you ready to go? My nephews will have detectives out looking for me. Well, I could run those calibration tests tonight. Take till midnight. After that, it's up to the Commodore here. There. There she is, Miss Harriman. That's the job that'll take you to the moon. It's a good ship. I... Uh... Hey, Mac, stop the car. Charlie's up. Look at him. Where's his medicine? His vest pocket. Break the glass. All right. Hold it under his nose. He looks lousy. Yeah. He's breathing easy. He'll come around soon. Mac, we ain't going to this. Why not? It's murder. He'll never stand up on his initial ac acceleration. Maybe not, but it's what he wants to do. Get that ship ready to fly. Hey! Hey, 
Hey, you. You. Me? Yeah. How many other people are there out here on this desert? What can I do for you? You James McIntyre? Hey, Mac. Yeah? What's the matter, John? Oh, you McIntyre? Yeah. I'm the deputy federal marshal in this district. I got a warrant for your arrest. What charge? Conspiracy to violate the Space Precautionary Act. Uh, you, uh, you, I suppose you're, uh, Charles Schwartz, huh? Yeah. Well, I got one for you, too. Thanks. And a man named Harriman got a court order to put seals on your spaceship. We haven't got any spaceship. What are you doing, kidding me? What's that, a kitty car? Strato yacht. Oh, yeah? Well, if it seals on it, the spaceship shows up. Now, oh, come on, where's Harriman? Uh, in the shed. Over there. What shed are you talking oh. oh, my knuckle. That's the one I broke playing football. I'm always hurting that thing. Charlie, we've got to hurry. Get Pop into the cabin and strap him into his hammock. Right. So long, deputy. Oh, my nothing. She's warm, Charlie. Everything set back there? How do I know? I didn't have time to run tests. It's up. You all right, Mr. Harriman? I think so. These straps are tight. Have to be when we blast off. All set, Charlie. Give me control. Check. Test keys. One bank. Check. Two bank. There's an auxiliary on. We don't need it. All right, boy, hang on. Let's go. Couldn't be better. You better stay in your hammock. I'll uh, loosen the straps a little. Uh, what is it? Nothing. Uh, just go easy on that side. Pop, you ain't fooling me, man. You got a couple of busted ribs. Well, there isn't much I can do until we ground. You take a neobarbital and I'll wake you when we cut you. No. No, no. I'll stay awake. Okay. Just shoot safe, man. Automatic, Charlie. How the tube's holding up? Fine. Tight as a drum. She handles nice. How's Pop? Alive. But he's in bad shape. How bad? Cracked a couple of ribs in the takeoff. You'd better set it down awful easy if you want him alive. I'll make a full swing around the moon and ease her in on an approach curve. It'll go fine. If we've got enough fuel. Uh, what? Uh, who called me? Something wrong, Pop? I thought somebody was calling me. I, I must have been asleep. I swung your hammock around. We're breaking now. There she is ahead. The moon. I've seen a thousand photographs. There, there. That's Copernicus. Tycho. The new Minerva Mine Stone. You know it all right, Pop. Where are you landing? Mari Embrium, between Aristolus and Archimedes. That's about 40 miles from Luna City, isn't it? Sure, sure. It won't be easy landing with a ground approach uh, radar, will it? I've done it before. Not without a second pilot to punch the statimeter. <laughs> Pop, you ought to have a mate's ticket. You know the whole routine. You must have really studied up. Yes, that's all I could do, study till now. Oh, look at her. The moon. I feel as if I were coming home. Yeah. Charlie. Yo. I'm taking her in. Cut in full power. Make it good, Mac. Pop can't take a rough one. Shut up and give me the power. I'll do my best. Okay. Start a meter setting punch. Hang on. Here we go. Lousy land. 
landing, Mac. Start a meter drift. How's our passenger? Quiet. I'll look. I wouldn't make any bets. That landing stuff. Will you shut up? I did my best. The pop. He's alive. There's blood on his uh, mouth. Uh, uh, All right, take take it easy, pal. We're down. We're take it easy. Vacuum suits. Where are they? Now steady, pop. Steady. You can't go out there yet. We've got to give us some first aid. Get me that suit. What do you think, Mac? Might as well get his suit out of the locker. Use the big one. He'll be more comfortable. Okay, pop. Easy now. Hurry. Hurry. Feel those zippers, Charlie. All right, now. Take it easy. All right, the helmet. Your diaphragm set? Check. Air valve? Set. Lift it on up. Don't hit him. There. All right. Come on, Charlie. Let's get into our suits and we'll carry them out the lock. Venture into the unknown world of the future. The world of... Dimension X. Imagine a planet 
Somewhere in the universe, where night comes only once in a thousand years, the friendly darkness night brings to our own world on this far-off planet is a thing of terror, a breeder of panic and evil. Be with us next week as we bring you Isaac Asimov's Nightfall. Dimension X is presented transcribed each week by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of the magazine Astounding Science Fiction. Today, Dimension X is presented Requiem, written for radio by Ernest Kenoy from the story by Robert Heinlein. Featured in the cast were Rod Hendrickson as Harriman, Bill Quinn as McIntyre, and Owen Jordan as Charlie.